Throughout the years, some games stick with you more than others. The Silent Hill series is one personally that has always remained in the depths of my mind. So what better way to honor the series than an analysis of Silent Hill 3's main protagonist, Heather Mason. What better way to start off an analysis than by the name of the character we'll be taking a look at. Heather's first name is derived from a plant that is known to flourish in the barren lands of Scotland. This is very fitting for her since in her own game she is forced to either take destiny in her own hands or die by it. Her last name, Mason, was in the past referred to those who were stonemasons. Stonemasons cut, prepare, and build with stone. Masonry is the craft in which one shapes rough pieces of rock into geometrical shapes. Perhaps her last name also ties in with her ability to flourish in bad conditions by also being able to take something in front of her and changing it for the better. Heather Mason is a 17 year old at the time of Silent Hill 3 and is thrown into a world of horror and confusion. Not only are there external stresses brought upon her, but as any teenager at the age of 17, there is also the internal struggle. As a soon to be adult, Heather traveled from place to place with her father, Harry Mason, unaware of the small little town that would soon want her back. Due to the nomadic lifestyle, the ideas of a stable home is foreign to her, much like many kids who may have had a parent that served in the military. With Harry as a single father, Heather had to become a strong and independent person to not be eaten by the world around her. She was not an average, generic, submissive teenage girl in the need of Prince Charming to save her. Even when in a highly emotional state, Heather is able to do what she has to do in order to protect herself. This shows that Heather isn't only headstrong, but also able to accept and carry the responsibility of self-preservation without pinning the blame on others due to her own personal failures. What's interesting about her appearance is this subtle, but conflicting vein. Her hair is blonde, but it seems to be fading, indicating it's not natural. People have dyed their hair for all sorts of reasons. Perhaps it's just for a different look, or in Heather's case, maybe it's more. She sports a white vest paired with a green skirt and an orange undershirt. While used more as a fashion statement for Heather, vests are usually more orientated with outdoor activities. Not having to worry about sleeves, but ample storage can be ideal for a hunter. Yet her green skirt at the same time represents a young woman who simply wanted to blend in with the other girls around her age. I found her brown boots to be very generic, but I believe that is also purposely done. Her boots are rounded and resemble more so of a hunting or rain boot than anything else. I'm not an expert in fashion, but from what I gathered with a quick search, a lot of skirt and boot combos usually have the boots with a larger heel and more pointed toe. The skirt is what makes this outfit really stand out though, as the vest and boots are understandable, but who wears a skirt for an outdoor excursion? Heather is indeed 17 years old, so it is not out of the ordinary for her style to be all over the place, but perhaps the specific kind is what she deemed the most comfortable. Heather was forced to return to a place in which she unknowingly came from, a place called Silent Hill. Her first sneak peek into Silent Hill comes from within a dream at the start of the game, 
but soon that dream becomes a reality. A strange man named Douglas Cartland appears, and due to his constant run-ins with Heather, she deems him as a stalker. Unknown to Heather, Douglas is actually hired by the cult to locate her, hence why he kept tabs on her all the time. As she progresses through the mall, she then encounters Claudia Wolf, who speaks in a cryptic message to her. They have come to witness the beginning. The rebirth of paradise, despoiled by mankind. What are you talking about? Now when one speaks nonsense, you do what any normal person would do and just walk away. After a series of battles and expiration, Heather is brought into sight of another character by the name of Vincent Smith. Vincent comes off just as weird as Claudia, but more so in a different way. Of course Heather is like, I don't have time for this, and leaves him too. Upon arrival at her apartment in the Daisy Villa, Heather then discovers Harry Mason, her father, dead. Let me also mention that Harry Mason was the main protagonist in the original Silent Hill to help add context to the storyline as him and what is going on in this is directly related to the first game. After regaining her composure, Heather then fights a monster and learns from Claudia that it was her orders to have Harry killed. There is another reason to fill your heart with hatred. It must be this way. One day you'll understand why. Conveniently, Douglas appears out of nowhere and tells Heather revenge isn't the answer, but Heather feels differently about that. Both Heather and Douglas make their way to Silent Hill and eventually head into the Brookhaven Hospital. Here she encounters twisted nurses, a guy named Stanley Coleman, and a discovery of who she really is. More events take place and eventually Heather ends up at the amusement park. It is here in a conversation between Douglas and Claudia, we learn the purpose for Heather returning to Silent Hill was to birth God in order to create a new paradise for the cult. Her father's death was the bait Claudia needed to keep Heather hooked. Heather eventually runs into Douglas, but his movement is poor due to a recently broken leg, which is suspected that Claudia made happen. Knowing Claudia is near, Heather then leaves Douglas to exact revenge for the death of her father. A few more events take place and Heather learns from Vincent inside the library of the cult church that the seal of Metatron that she obtained in earlier events can be used against Claudia. Heather catches up to Claudia who is with Vincent. Claudia proceeds to stab Vincent because of his betrayal and she also reveals that the seal of Metatron is useless against her. Heather is then enraged to have come so far and then fail, but somehow she has one more trick up her sleeve. In the pendant around her neck was a capsule of aglophotis, which then forces her to vomit the bloody fetus that was supposed to be God in front of Claudia. Heather taunts Claudia, but then Claudia pushes her out of the way and consumes the fetus. This sacrifices Claudia and turns her into the skeletal creature known as God which bears some resemblance to Alessa. Heather faces God, and the story ends here. Was that the end? I guess it's time to roll the credits. While Silent Hill 3 has three endings, I will only mention two. There is a normal ending which Heather comes back for Douglas and they escape from this hell. This is the canon ending due to its ties with Silent Hill Homecoming. But in the other ending, Heather comes back for Douglas, but instead of escaping with him, it's heavenly implied that she kills him, which in a way may follow in the footsteps of one of Claudia's prophecies. With the storyline out of the way, that now leads me to the analysis of Heather Mason at the end of her journey in Silent Hill 3.
The biggest difference in her character from the start of the game until now is acceptance of herself and of death. As children, we grow up and do not really process death the way that an adult would. In most cases, your family members are still around and healthy when you are a child, so death isn't very common. Heather only had one family member, Harry, who was here one day and gone the next, meaning this was her first experience with death of a loved one. Luckily, at her age, she was able to process that loss and come to acceptance with reality that Harry will never come back. Now looking forward, without a doubt, Heather will suffer a traumatic climax to all that she has experienced in Silent Hill. The trauma may not present itself now, but with her return back into the real world one day, it will arrive. Going from your average high schooler one day to an incubator for a god the next would do wonders on anyone's psyche. To say she would suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder would be a high understatement. While not for certain, I'm sure she would live with Douglas until she is able to stand on her own two feet as an adult, but in terms of the game's lore, I do not believe there is any more details on Heather after the ending of Silent Hill 3. Perhaps she will blend back into society at some point in time after a lot of therapy, or maybe she will return back to Silent Hill in the future of our imaginations, since Konami has burned the series like the cult has done Alessa so many years ago. But that is something we may never truly know. I want to thank you so much for watching the video if you have made it this far. What character would you like to see next? Consider subscribing if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one.